WPGET Web Dev Tutorials for All User Levels. Okay, so today we're going to look at recreating this kind of layout um, where we've got three columns along the top. It wraps around where we've got a 50% wide column, then we've got one here that's actually 15%. We've got all our gaps in place. And this is using a single flex container for our wrapper. Uh, which is set to a row with wrap. Um, and we're going to look at how we can control what happens when things wrap. Um, so the first thing we want to do is work out, we want this to go to the full width of the box container uh, that we've created. We're going to work out how do we get three perfectly fit, perfectly wide uh, boxes on one row, uh, wrapping around to the next row and what happens with the widths of those containers when they are wrapped and how can we control that. So that's what we'll look at today with Flex. Um, and we're using Elementor's um, Flex implementation. There are a few limitations with it. Um, I'll talk about that at the end, um, but um, I'm just gonna show you how we can do that with what we have. Um, we, I'm gonna try and avoid using any custom CSS. There is one case where I have to use custom CSS because of a lack of support in our mentor, uh, and that is to control the widths when they wrap. Um, but I'll, that's a very small amount of CSS, and I'll show you how that part works as well. So let's head over to it, and here's my test page. I'm just going to delete that entire column, uh, that entire uh, section, I should say. So we're starting from fresh. Now, so the first thing we want to do is we're going to grab a container and chuck it in there, and um, I'm going to just set the couple of properties on there. So generally when I have an outer container, um, I make it a section. Um, so that is to just keep it semantically correct. So any top level containers that go all the way to the edge, um, I generally make them a section. Okay, so I'm going to give it some background um, so we can see a little bit better. Uh, maybe my grey 3 background, so I've got a dark background uh, and I can just see the uh, grey or darker grey, mid grey um, on there. And by default you can see we've got the dark grey going all the way to the outside and we've got this dotted line around in the middle here. What that dotted line is, is in elements or when you add a container, if it's set to boxed, it adds a div on the outside and then it adds an inner container div and it sets that to whatever the site uh, width is. Let's have a look what that's called. I keep forgetting what it's called. It's called the layout uh, content width. So you can change your content width globally here. Um, and what will happen is every time you add a container to the page, by default it's boxed and it'll have the outer container and it'll put an inner div which is the center, sorry, the uh, inner container, and we'll make it that box width. And you can change it on a container by container basis here. Okay, so for now I'm just gonna leave that as it is. Um, and I'm going to then grab another container. I'm gonna stick it in the inside. Now, this is, oh, I'll talk about this here, this is one of the ones I wish Elementor would actually change or give you an option to, to set as a default. Um, I would say that 99% of the containers I'm going to add to the page are going to be full width container, meaning it's going to take up the full width of whatever its parent is. So this container I've just added here, uh, so I'll use the navigator, so you can see that container is inside that container there, which has a inner div, which is uh, set to the box width of 1140. So when I add this container underneath it and I set it to full width, It'll only go to a maximum of 1140 anyway. But the beauty is that it contains, it creates a single div. There's no extra inner div for the inner content. Um, and it just makes more sense. So I'll come back to some things that I think they should change or add, um, which uh, would make, uh, make this more in line with standard flex, um, rather than being mostly standard flex and then some stuff that you have to override. Anyway. So I've got a single container. I'm going to change the uh, background on that to my gray two, so it's a different gray, so I can see it. Um, and that's a single inner container. 
Now, if I just duplicated that container, by default, what I get in Elementor is the, uh, every container that we add, by default, is a set to a column a direction. So it goes, as you add, uh, what might fit on a row just goes to the next column. Um, so, and then um, each container has a default width of 100%, uh, which is another thing I think is probably should change, which again we'll talk about at the end. Um, and so what's going to happen is as I add containers, it adds them in a single column with my gap here being my standard column gap. Again, you can change this globally or you can change it individually. So I can actually move that around and change that if I want to, uh, just there. Um, so that's pretty much the default behavior. I'm just going to call this outer container a wrapper. That makes a bit more sense. Um, and these are actually columns or they'll end up being columns. So here's my outer wrapper. So what I want to do is turn this into a row. So on the outer wrapper, I go to my layout and I make it a row. So this is what I mean. It's, it's actually by default, it's actually um, column. Um, but what uh, Elementor don't show you that by this UI. So if I change that to column, nothing changes because it's already a column. All right. Um, so, but I want it to be a row. So I click on row. Um, and now it's a row, so it's going to lay everything out in a row. Um, I haven't touched the wrapping, so what will happen is if I keep duplicating these, keep duplicating, they just get smaller and smaller and smaller to fit in with that row. Uh, and even if I've got wrap on, um, it'll still keep uh, just duplicating. Unless I've got some content inside that it can't fit, it'll just keep duplicating to stay on that row. Okay. Oop, wrap, there we go. Go to wrap on, and away we go. It's just doing exactly the same thing. All right, so what we want to do is we want to set this so that we can only have a th maximum of three on that top level. So let's go back. What I might do is actually chuck some content inside one of these so that when we do wrap, we can actually see some um, copy. Okay, so I'll just put some uh, text inside that container just so we've got something to, um, to see. All right, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to set this container. I'm going to tell it that I want the max width to be 30%. All right, so now we've got a container that's 30%. Um, and I'm going to turn the wrapping on so that what will happen is it'll wrap around after the, um, it can't fit any more on there. So I'm going to duplicate that now. Oops, wrong one. Okay, so we've got three, four. Do I turn the wrapping on? Ah, I wonder. I put the wrapping on the wrong container. We're going to make sure we select the wrapper, put my wrapping on. So, what this does, because I've said the width is 30%. It fits 30% there, then the column gap, 30%, column gap, 30%, column gap. It doesn't go all the way to the right hand edge because what's happening is the um, uh, it's respecting the 30%. And it, when it gets to the fourth 30%, it can't fit it on that row. So it wraps it around to the next row. All right. So what if we then go back to these containers? This is another thing in Flex that, again, I'll talk about at the end, um, that I wish I'd improve on. So I'm going to delete these again. I'm going to go back to my single container here. And if I want that to stretch to fill in the available space, what I do have to go into the, not into the layout, but I'm going to go into the advanced. And I'm going to go to size, which is our flex glow, flex um, shrink. And I can't turn shrink and grow on at the same time with this part of the UI. I'm going to click on this uh, custom and then I can turn on my flex grow and shrink. Okay, so pretty much what I would do is just go to the custom, turn on grow and shrink. And now that fits whatever space is on that row. Right now, if I duplicate that now, duplicate it again, put three on the row and it's fitting. So both sides here got the same amount of space. Go to the next one. 
And because I've got my flex grow on, what's happened is it's gone, okay, my, my basis width is 30%. So I'm gonna calculate my flex rule based on this being 30%, that 30%, that 30%. So that's 90% all up. If I add another 30%, that's gonna be bigger than 100%. So I'm gonna wrap the next one around. So now I've got three elements on this row. So now I'm gonna apply my flex shrink and flex grow rules. I'm gonna say, well, okay, Let's make these as big as they need to be to fill in the available space. All right, so I'll show you what I mean by that. If I turn the, I uh, wish I could select all of these, but I can't. Um, maybe I'll just select the first one and I'll turn the flex grow off. So when I turn the flex grow off on this container, it's 30%. And see how this still goes to the edge? Now, if I get the next container and I turn off my flex, grow on shrink on that, these are now both 30% and that fills in the remaining space. All right, so you're getting the picture there. But I wanna have this the with the uh, layout that I um, showed you in the beginning. So we're gonna set these all to flex, grow, flex, shrink, so that they have a basis of my 30% that I set them to in the widths, uh, but then they'll all grow equally to fill in the space that's available. All right. So, all right, now this is where one of the settings in uh, Flex is missing in, uh, in Elemental Flex. I'm going to duplicate that again and again. These are 30% basis, but because we can only fit two on that row, we've only got two to put on that row, it's going to then go, okay, we're going to expand that to fill in that available space. So if I duplicate it again, it'll be the same as the top row. Okay, get rid of that last one. All right, now, one of the things here is that if I have four containers and it wraps around and I really don't want this to be that wide, I want that to be a maximum of 50% uh, when it wraps around. There's no settings in Flex in any of these containers where we can set the maximum width. So we've got our, in our layout, we've got our content here, uh, we've got our uh, width, which is a physical width, um, we've got some stuff here, you know, advanced, there's nothing in here. Looking through this again, we've got our size, which is just the flex, grow and shrink. Um, yeah, there's nothing in here where we can actually set the maximum width of that container. So this is where we have to use some um, custom CSS. Now I've created a couple of rules in my site settings. In advance here. Now I'll just quickly look at these. I might zoom in a little bit on that so we can see those. So what I've done is I've created a media query because uh, when we get down to mobile responsive, this all goes to 100% to make sense. Um, so we, what we want to do is have some rules that only apply when our minimum width is 768 pixels. So everything over the mobile breakpoint, we want these rules to apply. And I've called them max width 50, max width 30, and max width 15. And all I'm doing is setting the max width properly. So if I grab this rule here, that class I should say here, back out, zoom back out, and I go to... my i'll just do it on this last uh, element here so this last container and i'll go to my advanced and i'll add my uh, css class here of max with 50. when that wraps around we've got a maximum with the 50. Okay, i'm just going to duplicate that again and uh, there we go so it's even though these are not actually 50 percent because we've also got this 20 pixel uh, gap here, so it's not going to be quite 50%, but what we're saying is that's going to be a maximum of 50%. So it's just slow, grows very slightly there and fills that gap. Um, and if you go and now we've got two there. Now, what about this last one? What if I want that to be a maximum width of 30%? All I have to do is change this to max width 30, and that's a maximum width of 30% or max with 15 that I created. 
and that's going to be a maximum of 15 percent update that i refresh this page that's pretty much what we've got there right now i've got this as a boxed outer container and whatever i do with this with it'll be responsive see the size is changing these bottom two are only using up 50 percent of the maximum available space uh, and this one's 15 percent so we get down to a mobile breakpoint where everything goes to 100 percent what if we want it to be wider we go to our wrapper and we can just make that uh wider let's make it say 1400 okay so Now we can see where the edge of this E is, is our box width for our standard box width. But on this particular uh, wrapper, I've made it 1400 wide. So from, from that this uh, left point to the right point is 1400. Uh, and it's still responsive all the way through to the break point. Um, what if I wanted it narrow? What if I wanted it say 800 pixels wide? We go so it's fitting into an 800 pixel wide so it's narrower than the standard box width uh, and we've still got our uh, responsive break points there uh, we might find that 800 pixels wide that's too skinny so let's go back to this particular one here and we'll say we want that to be 30 uh, max width 30. there we go so we've got a maximum width of 30 percent as we scroll down, it's pretty much saying the same as that up there, but using the max width instead of the width. Um, all right, so that's pretty much uh, what I've got to show you on this. So we can use a single flex wrapper container. Um, we can set it to wrap, set the minimum width of the uh, containers. Inside that, we can set the minimum width of the containers um, to whatever percentage you want. Uh, if we want more on the row, we just set that smaller. So if I said, say, 25%, would that give me more? No, it wouldn't. Uh, if I said 20%. Okay, and we're going to go back to the container up here. Make that. Just take that out. So the maximum width of 20%. 20% on that one. This is where it gets a bit tricky. So, see, this is actually a bit of a interesting thing. So, it's got the width of twenty pixels there. We then need to set the width on there at twenty. 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 Now, because we set it to 20 uh, on each of these containers, what it's going to do is going to 20% plus 20, that's 40, 60, 80. If we try to add another 20%, it's 120, so it's not going to put on that row. It'll wrap it around to the next row. This last container here, that's got my uh, max width 30. If we change that to 50, that last one's going to be 50% of the width of that container. So we can control a lot of stuff on how many elements fit on each page, on each row, I should say, uh, in the one container. And we can control a lot of this. It's not as good as using um, a grid, CSS grid, um, but it's, it's okay. And it gives us a little bit of control over how these look uh, and layout. So it's not, it's not too bad. Um, all right, so that's pretty much it. So some of the shortcomings that I think that uh, uh, could be done a little bit better. So first of all, when we look at a container, uh, we've got two modes, which is boxed and full width. With flex, by default, when you just add flex to a uh, container, it is not 100%, it is auto. Uh, and for whatever reason, Elementor have made it 100%. And it probably works with just the general thinking of how people use Elementor. Um, so I won't make any judgment on that, but the, it'd be really good if you had an auto mode so you can actually have things so they just lay out to their content, right? Rather than having to lay out to um, 
uh, you know, the width and um, max width and flex basis and all that sort of stuff. So if that could be auto, yeah, if you had an auto option, I can't think of an exact scenario. Though, and I know I came across this a couple of days ago where I wanted to one of the uh, flex, uh, sorry, I wanted the box widths to be auto and I couldn't do it without custom CSS. So it'd be good if it just had an auto just there. Um, the next thing that I think that would be great is if they had a minimum width setting here. So we don't have to use custom CSS to set a, a, a sorry, a maximum width and a minimum width. Um, both of those would be really good. They don't have flex basis, but max width, min width, and flex, you can get away without having to use flex basis. Instead of width, just width, if they had width, uh, min width and max width on here, that would be really useful. Um, now, the other thing is that with the defaults, when, say, for example, um, there is no wrap on here, um, that's no wrap, it's exactly the same, but the UI doesn't show you what the default is. It's just using the flex defaults. So some of the stuff is overridden from the defaults in, and CSS um, to be done the elemental way, and some of it isn't, uh, but there's no indication in the UI to say what they've done. So I would suggest that even here, for example, this items direction, I know it's, the row is the default, um, but why not show that in the UI? So why not show that if this is a row, show that icon as being a row. Uh, if it's uh, got no wrap, show that as having no wrap. Um, and then you can see exactly looking at the UI, what it's supposed to be. And again, I know they're defaults, uh, but if you turn this off and you assume that it's the defaults, um, that's fine. Um, but um, I think from a user perspective, it would make more sense is that if the direction is a row, then show that it's a row. If there's no wrap, then show that it's got no wrap. Okay, so that's just a bit of feedback for the UI. I think that would be a little better. Um, probably the strangest thing for me um, is there's a few missing things and renamed things. Now, in this layout here for the wrapper uh, container, um, so we've got our uh, section here which is for the container um, and then we've got a section for the items which are the items within the container what do we want to do with those I mean the, the, the CSS is still set on this element but this is to do with what's going to happen with the items we put inside the container so that makes sense to have that there what doesn't make sense is that all the other settings for this container for flex are over in the advanced so these here these three here, why are they in the advanced tab? Um, align self makes sense, order makes sense. Um, size, this is actually the flex grow properties. It's not actually the size. So it's confusing between, we've got width, height, and then we've got size. Um, that's really flex grow and flex shrink. So maybe that should be your, that's what it should be what it's called, grow and shrink, not size. Um, and all of this here, I think that should be moved over to the layout tab underneath where we've got this minimum height. Okay, so this is all specifically for this container. Um, so this is what you want to you want to set on that container. You want it to have a flex grow or shrink. You want it to align to a certain place, um, be in a particular order. Why does it have to be on the advanced tab? Why can't it be right there? with the width and the height and adding in a min width, a uh, max width and an auto here, put all of that in this section here. It just makes more sense because you're going to one place to set the properties for that container. Right? The advanced can be you know, stuff that you generally don't use, which is, you know, you, you use every now and then, which is, you know, your position, Z index and padding margin. So that can stay there, I guess. Um, but the flex stuff, makes no sense to have on the advance. It should be right here um, on the layout because that's really part of the layout. So that's for me, that's a change that I think is worth considering. Um, but that's up to the elemental guys, but um, let them know what you think. Let them know if you think that's a better idea or, um, or you like the way it's currently working. Uh, if you like this kind of thing, let me know and I'll do more of this. I'll try to waffle less. 
uh, as I work through, but um, please uh, hit the subscribe and hit the like button. Thank you.